The date is January 25th, 1994, and we're pleased and honored to have uh, Dr. David Richards, D.O., and President of the University of North Texas Health Science Center at Fort Worth. And we're doing the taping here in the Biotech Communications in the Gibson D. Lewis Library. Good afternoon, Dr. Richards. Thanks for Good taking afternoon. the time. Pleased to be here. I'd like to first talk about maybe your prior background before coming to TCOM, if you'd like a little bit. Uh, okay. Uh, I am a uh, family doctor. I uh, practice in a small town north of Columbus, Ohio for about 17 years, Worthington, Ohio. And I uh, was the founding chair of family medicine at the Ohio University College of Osteopathic Medicine. I helped start that school back in 1976, and I stayed there uh, as associate, uh, the chairman of family medicine, and uh, moved on as associate dean for clinical and academic affairs. Uh, stayed there until 1981, and was invited to come here as associate dean for uh, academic affairs. So it's been 13 uh, plus years at, at TCM and now the Health Science Center. Well, what were your goals when you first arrived at TCOM? Did you have any agenda in mind or just kind of start out and work as you went along? Well, uh, the agenda was that uh, particularly to try to put in place some initiatives on the academic side that would have some meaning. Uh, for example, the first committee that I, that I brought together at charge as the academic dean, and appreciate that at that time I was I was uh, uh, the academic dean, not the dean of the institution. And my predecessor had the title of president and dean. So certain areas were not under my, my uh, uh, area. So there's uh, a very distinct difference then. There's a difference. And uh, the first committee that I put together was a committee on research. And what that did, uh, and appreciate that time, we had somewhere around $250,000 of external funding. That initiated some support from the faculty, uh, both on the clinical and basic science side, to move forward in the area of research. At the present time, as of today, we have uh, uh, $18,200,000 in, in funding as compared to $250,000 back in 1981. So there's a major change in the area of, of research. Some other areas that we put together was some task forces on service as, as well as, as the mentioned task force on research. That gave us three components to start. One was a previously approved uh, wellness and prevention statement. So we had a curriculum wellness and prevention statement, we had a research statement, and we've had a service statement. All three have been approved by the Board of Regents in 1981 through 1983. So those are some of the initiatives that we're having, and at that point in time there was a problem with patient volume, and there were several committees that were in place to look at patient volume. Finally, what we decided was that we needed to enhance our clinical faculty, bring in uh, the best people we could find, and allow that to grow, and that's now somewhere close to $14 million uh, per year in, in clinical uh, activity. A definite large sum of money to, that you had to, mm. to have to work with. And it, uh, you invest in people. You bring in the right people, you let them fly, and they, they move forward. It's, at one point, I don't have the exact dates, there was a situation with JPS, mm -hmm. uh, with that particular hospital. Mm -hmm. Did that uh, influence the goals of TCOM becoming a health science center, or no, not related at all? They're, they're unrelated. When I came here in 1981, there was a lawsuit that was filed by the Texas Osteopathic Medical Association. Uh, they hired the attorney, and it involved five of our faculty because our faculty did not have staff privileges at John Peter Smith Hospital. Uh, something in there that precluded, their bylaws precluded admission of osteopathic physicians. Uh, I really was not involved in the lawsuit. Uh, I really didn't know that much about it. Uh, this pro progressed through the court system 
until I took over as interim executive vice president in 1984. And somewhere between 84 and 85, uh, I said it's time that I find out what that lawsuit's about. So I visited uh, with some of the faculty members and I visited with people from uh, Texas Osteopathic Medical Association and I asked that we meet with the attorney who was trying the case. I met privately with that attorney and I got a feel for it and what he told me at that luncheon is that he didn't care what happened with a lawsuit. That if we wanted in John Peter Smith, it would have to happen by community support. At which point then uh, I brought together the uh, faculty, the students, and the staff at a five o'clock meeting and I asked the attorney if he'd be kind enough to come and present his views, of which he did. And he told the faculty uh, and staff and students that he didn't care what would the outcome of the lawsuit would be, that it had to come through community support. And I had the chairman of our college advisory council there at the time, now the CEO of the healthcare of Texas, uh, the osteopathic medical system across the street, Jay Sandlin, who spoke to that also from his, his standpoint. We're not criticizing the faculty that filed a lawsuit uh, at all. What we're saying is that there's another way to do things. So from that time forward, we uh, uh, attempted to build community support. Along that same time, I was visited by, uh, by uh, Dr. George Lubel and Dr. Carl Everett wanted to meet with me and Jay Salmon, uh, based that he uh, was the chairman of College Advisory Council, and Dr. Uh, Roy Fisher, who was the founder of the now the Osteopathic Medical Center. And we had dinner at Colonial Country Club one night, and I brought Dr. Zachary, who was a dean at the time, and they told me that they wanted me to pursue getting into John Peter Smith. Uh, I said, do you understand what that means for the Osteopathic Medical Center? Then it was a Fort Worth Osteopathic Medical Center. So this was back in the, in the mid or late 80, 80s? This was in the... Uh, the uh, somewhere between 84 and 86. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know the exact time, but uh, what I told them was that that I would give my commitment to open up John Peter Smith. I would do everything I could to make that happen, but there would be a downside to that. The downside would be that once we, as an institution, have the credibility to get into John Peter Smith, whatever that takes, through community support, then our faculty and other DOs would then be open to being a part, admitting patients to other hospitals besides the Fort Worth Osteopathic Medical Center, and that's exactly what happened. But we pursued that on the basis of, uh, of creating networks and lunches. I brought in 600 people in a period of four years for tour and lunches. We, we, we've been in this facility. We, we've right. brought in community leaders to tell the story. And the themes that they bring are two, two themes when these 600 people is, why haven't you told your story so we understand who you are as an institution and what you bring to the community? And second of all, why are you not serving Ann John Peter Smith? And of course, now that's happening. Did you? What types of things did you do for the community support? I know that you're very, you know, active as far as involved in the community. What well, kinds of things do you do to, you know, enhance the school's image now? Because you know, for years, people heard of a TCOM, but that was about the extent of it. And now everyone, you know, knows. Well, I think what that that is is the community leaders who have come in here were so impressed with the people and so impressed with what our mission is and we have a wonderful story to tell. So those people go out and tell other people and it's taken years. Plus the fact we're doing good things. Uh, we brought in good faculty. The, the best example I can give you is because of the relationship with the University of North Texas, we were successful in bringing in Janice Knabel. Jan Knabel. Uh, she uh, is a, a geriatrician but the reason she came here was because of the university connection. She uh, 
uh, Hiram Friedson, 25 years ago, was a, a PhD, developed a center for aging at the University of North Texas. But with that connection, she saw the potential. As a result of that, today, or yesterday, uh, we received an announcement that she would s receive $1.2 million of funding from the National Institute of Health for her geriatric uh, training uh, geriatricians and in a partnership with Baylor College of Dentistry. Those are how some of the things happen over the period of years. You bring in the right people, you let them believe in the vision, and they move forward with a, with a zeal to do the things that need to be done. Well, are there, are there any other events or people that, that come to your mind or off the top of your head that uh, helped in the growing support of TCOM oh, at the time uh, or now? Yes, uh, besides uh, Dr. Hurley, uh, who took over as chancellor in, in 1982, uh, 1981, excuse me, uh, has been, been an instrumental uh, factor. Uh, you have, uh, I can't single out any one or two individuals. What I have to single out is that uh, the community as a whole made that happen. Okay. Because we're right. serving that community. The community has made this happen. Uh, uh, and I, everyone is a father and mother of success. Okay? Very few people stand <laughs> uh, when there's failure. Right. There's so many people that have, have made that happen because they have invested in us. The state legislature, Gip Lewis, uh, uh, all the Tarrant County delegation over the period of years, Republican and Democrat, have given us support when we really didn't need that support. But as a result of that, we put 31% of our graduates in towns of under 25,000 population in the state of Texas. And that's a, a goal or a, in the mission of, of the TCOM or the Health Science Center. It's in now. a mission and, uh -huh. it, in, and there are very few medical schools in the country that have that record. That's very impressive. Well, it's, it's a story that has to be told. It's a story that 50 years from now, I hope somebody will look at a tape and understand the changes that have happened in this institution in a short period of time. And the people who were president, the, the Ralph Willards, the Marion Corys, who were in leadership previously, and people that I can't, can't mention because I don't remember some of their names, they were there in the front lines making it happen. I know in my research uh, in doing all this, I can see some of the changes from uh, you know, what little knowledge that I have. Now I'm going to ask you a point that, that uh, I don't know if you're ready for this now, but go for it. What, what choices or decisions did you have to make, uh, you know, good or bad, in TCM becoming the UNT Health Science Center? The choices that I that I had to make was that appreciate that that a couple of things that when I was offered the job as as interim executive vice, vice president by the board of regents and the chancellor. Uh, one of the stipulations, what I consider being a candidate for the presidency. Uh, I didn't know at the time when I took that. Uh, they asked if I would consider th this, but I didn't know if I would, would want it uh, because I was going through a situation where my wife had cancer and uh, we thought at one point that uh, her uh, uh, life would be limited because of the cancer. Uh, there were many stipulations in there, but uh, when I was, when my wife's uh, health looked like it was uh, uh, progressing to the point that uh, she would be okay, uh, and I knew that I did not have that obligation, then I decided to to pursue uh, as a candidate to become president of, of TCOM. But as soon as that confirmed, there were two things that I gave a commitment to personally. And this was uh, articulated with with uh, with Dr. Hurley, uh, and and uh, was knowledgeable that the two goals are that I would do everything in my power to increase the opportunity for a quality program educationally, and that fit into the John Peter Smith perspective. And the second thing is that we would become an academic health center associated at some point in time with the University of North Texas. And appreciate that that dream was not mine alone, because if you go out uh, on, uh, in the atrium, there's a plaque out there 
that refers to the, the Health Science Center, mm -hmm. uh, then North Texas State Health Science Center. So that's not a new, new goal, except the implementation of that occurred as we increased our credibility, not only in this community, but within the state and in the nation. And North Texas grew, and the leadership of the Board of Regents uh, assisted in putting in place support systems to make this happen. And an example is this, the library that you're sitting in, in here now. The Tarrant County delegation saw fit to give us a state-of-the-art library, which was named the Health Science Center uh, 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 Library, because this was a resource not only for our academicians, right. but also for the community as a whole. So this whole concept has been really around since 81 or 82 in, in theory. Uh, well, the we're concept, already talking about The concept stages. goes back at the start of, of the relationship in 1975 with then North Texas, 1972 with then the relationship with North Texas State University, which is now UNT. And our relationship with the Board of Regents and the, and the Chancellor has always seemed to then be very, a uh, very good thing then. Very critical for the growth and, and of our institution. There is no good medical school in the United States that I know of that is not associated with a university. There's no good university that doesn't have an association with uh, a, a good medical school. There are a few exceptions. There are private medical schools that are outstanding, but the majority of those have a relationship with, with a university. <clears throat> Was uh, becoming a health science center I mean, necessary for the growth and success of TCOM? Yes. Uh, can, you, can you maybe elaborate a little yeah, bit more the, on that? Yes. Uh, we are a state institution. Uh, our competitors uh, are not the private osteopathic schools or the other state osteopathic schools. We're in a different league, in my opinion, than those other schools. What we, ha what we have to deal with is where is the state of Texas going and how do we fit into that situation? With all the other medical schools. With the other medical schools. Not, not the DS schools in the country, but our state alone. Our state alone. Okay. And that doesn't mean that we're anti-osteopathic. The, the, the day that the decision was made for us to take that first state dollar, the, the d first dollar that we got from the state of Texas to do business, it, it created change. Because now we're subject to the rules and regulations and the, the wishes of the legislature. Right. The legislature was was heading into uh, in, into economic uh, difficulty. The state was heading into economic difficulty. When I took over as president, in 19 January 13th of 1986, I thought, my goodness, what a good time to be president. We had so many things to do, and there's so many dollars that we were we were at one point. We would say what we want, and we got what we needed to do our business. It was that simple. But in 86, uh, Governor White uh, then was governor, and one month after I became president, he said that we cut our budget 5 or 10 percent. Okay? What a way to start off. What a way to start off. And, and so we had to look at ourselves differently. Right. Uh, then the next fall, we got another 5 percent cut, a total of 15 or 20 percent cut. And here's a young inst institution that's trying to grow. We were trying to evolve. We we're fledgling, but yet with the budget cuts that we had. So we had to reset our priorities. But there were three factors. One is, what is the cost per student ratio? Appreciate when you have four students, when you have 400 students, and you have the, the number of employees that we have, and you have the facilities that we have, then a cost per student is relatively high if you're sitting there alone. Right. The other parameter, that's a state parameter, is what is a cost per student per space ratio? Just look at this library itself in relationship to the number of square feet. We are very plentiful in terms of space. So in those two categories, we stick high. The cost per student and the space per student is very high. So what do we do about that? Fully recognizing that health care reform is going to occur at some point in time, we needed to become a health science center. So 
we could add, for example, the graduate program where our PhDs and masters last August, uh, October, moved down to the Health Science Center. So now instead of having 400 plus students, we have 400 plus 75 students. So now the ratio occurs, which means that uh, uh, my salary and other people's salary is now divided partially between the medical school and partially within the area of the graduate school. Also recognizing that, that we have a unique mission to train primary care physicians for areas of need in Texas. That is, that is our overall medical school mission. But now with adding a graduate school and looking at a public health school and looking at allied health programs that fit within the mission, then we have an opportunity to figuratively take down the walls of the Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine and figuratively move that out into the community. That's what a health science center is about. It's not bricks and mortar. Right. It's people and programs that serve the community as a whole. And ultimately, the history uh, will be judged and how successful this institution is, not on the basis of the number of students that we graduate in our graduate program or public health program or in our medical school, but how well have we collectively used the resources from the state of Texas as well as from our external funding to serve that community as a whole. And appreciate that I'm not defining that community. That's for others to determine. But how successful we are there will ultimately impact how successful this institution has been in the last uh, 23 years of, of existence. So the, I know that the healthcare situation is in its infancy. So it sounds like to me you're definitely looking at that in a sense, uh, where we, that might go. We're, we are strategically trying to plan ourselves, Blake, to, to take advantage of our strengths and move in position of leadership, not only with the state, but in the national level uh, in healthcare reform. There, there are consistent parameters at this point in time on what healthcare reform is about. Tonight we'll listen to the President of the United States talk on crime and violence and, and healthcare reform. But we'll be, what will be consistent is that three parameters will address healthcare reform in whatever negotiated per, uh, areas that, that the legislature, federal legislature will determine and the state legislature will determine. One right. is what will happen to increase the access to healthcare Two, what will happen in terms of reducing those costs? And where do we fit into quality as it relates to health care? And your institution has been working for years on those three issues so we can set ourselves on the edge. We are on the cut, cutting edge. I was called today and asked to testify before a state committee uh, relative to performance-based funding reason I'm, that I'm being asked is because we're out on the leading edge. The governor's task force on health care reform was written for us. What's consistent as a parameter of health care reform is one, the shift from hospital care to ambulatory care because of the refinement and the enhancement of high technology in relationship to, to how medicine is practiced, more things can be done ambulatory. The second is in the area of specialty care to primary care. We are one of the leaders, we are the leader in the state in family medicine and in primary care. We're on one of the leaders in the nation in that same category. Those are two parameters. The other is from physician controlled to government controlled in terms of the areas of cost, access, and the area of quality. And those areas will be enhanced. Whatever programs negotiated, either Republican or Democrat, that will occur. We have to position ourselves in what we're doing in cooperative and collaborative programs, not only with the University of North Texas, but also with other area hospitals, also with other medical schools. And we're part of that national network looking at, uh, at rural health and border health and doing the things that are necessary to be on the cutting edge of health care reform. Uh, we think that, uh, that individual disease focus is another parameter where previously physicians are concerned about 
uh, uh, one with a with a disease. Well, the focus will move to what about the population? How is the population concerned? What what's happening out here in the North Side community that the incidence for diabetes mellitus is so great? And what do you do? What do you do, Health Science Center? medical school, graduate school, whatever the parameters are, what are you going to do to support those population issues and help us? So in other words, instead of a cure for the, the disease, what, how do you keep it from happening in the beginning? What are the factors then? Is that what you're... What, what I'm like saying... Like the north side, you're saying the people there. We, we, we're, we're out right now, last weekend, uh, with negotiations, uh, meeting with uh, our missions people and meeting with our student affairs people and working with some leadership uh, in the humanities department we met with a group of ministers baptist ministers from the from the stop six area please can you help us met with a coalition of these ministers will you help us will you come out to our community and will you put on a program a series of programs using the resources of the Health Science Center and using the resources of the university as, as it, the case may, may be needed to come out and share with us the first symposium on the single parent. Because the whole value structure of the family and the deterioration of the family uh, and the values and the social, uh, social issues that fit into that community, there are deficits. And what they're looking for is a support system, which the Health Science Center can bring, of using our resources, not only to treat medical students and graduate students, but to serve that community. And this will be a first of a series of, of programs to reach out and have them uh, understand who we are. And the bottom line of what, what I'm trying to do with my team uh, and my vice presidents and, and the chairman is to bring leadership you know uh, i read someplace no i received a christmas card from somebody who said proverbs 25 that men uh, w or women without vision will perish okay? what we're trying to do is to find out in, what that vision is collectively and that translates as far as we're concerned in the area of community and again, this is on the cutting edge. As, it's uh, on the man, cutting uh, edge. You made a remark about uh, performance-based uh, funding, mm -hmm. and I'm not so sure I'm real clear on that. Would you mind just explaining yes. that in some way? Performance-based funding is that you have a set budget. They may give us X number of million dollars as a base budget. But yet the legislature says, look, there are, there are needs that are unmet in Texas. We don't have enough rural physicians. We don't have enough urban physicians who are serving in underserved urban communities right in Fort Worth or Dallas or around the country. Now, we're going to give you X number of dollars as a base budget. But based on the number of graduates, for example, that you put in rural areas, you're going to get credit for that in terms of dollars. You're going to get credit for what you do in relationship to a uh, uh, number of rural physicians that you have. You're going to get credit in relationship to the number of minorities that you have in rural areas. You're going to get a set, a set of parameters based on the state needs. And therefore, yeah. the extra funding, it could be research, it could be service, it could be grants, it could be a, per, a variety of different things. But we're trying to position ourselves so that we're ready to meet those expectations. There was an appropriate time for the Health Science Center initiative. Uh, when was that? When did you really decide this was the time to do it? The time to, to do that came when we had an enhanced relationship with the University of North Texas and we felt that the community groups uh, uh, we're moving forward in relationship to support for this institution. And we felt that, that this last legislature was a time, the time to do it. Because Gib Lewis was stepping down, he still had support. This was viewed as his medical school. We wanted to move forward, and we felt that we have a hiatus of this year to be able to make it happen. 
what uh, what decisions and had to be made in in all this to make this a successful initiative? Well, well, and what concerns did you have to address? Well, the the the, in, the decisions had to be made is what we were going to call ourselves. Okay. The name? What are you going to call the name, huh? University of North Texas Health Science Center. Appreciate that you don't have too many medical schools in the country where two of the founders are still alive. That's true. Two out of the three are still alive and they're still active in what happens. They invested their money. They invested their time 23 years ago. They invested their life to make the Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine, which had a very strong osteopathic uh, influence. To go ahead and make that change uh, was a drastic move. Uh, how did the alumni feel about this? And appreciate that, that when this thing was done, uh, that there was not the Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine. The bill, that created, the bill that created the Health Science Center stated, as it did with every other health science center that was created in the past, that there would be a College of Osteopathic Medicine that was one stipulation, but not the Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine, because the legislature did not feel that that was something that they wanted, because they viewed it was an umbrella type of program. So what transpired was, when the bill was signed, it was a College of Osteopathic Medicine, and technically the Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine did not exist. That created a problem with the alumni. We graduated, and I have two sons that are, we have two sons that are graduates of this, where their diploma says they graduated from the Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine. That did not exist for a period of time. But the Board of Regents, with the support of Dr. Hurley, in their wisdom, renamed the Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine. Making that the cornerstone of the Health Science Center, it, more it, or less. Yes, it has, it is the cornerstone. It always will be the cornerstone. Without the Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine and the mission that it has, there could be no growth of the Health Science Center as we envision it. So the, the problems were, how do we sell that? How, how does that fit? When the signs went up, the first sign went up, University of North Texas Health Science Center on the side of the building, I started getting calls. What are you doing? <laughs> Where is the school that I graduated from? <laughs> uh, the other sign is coming. But it could not come until the Board of Regents authorized the name Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine, and then it went to the coordinating board for its non-substantive approval. The coordinating board as of in? The state of Texas. Uh, of the colleges and universities? That's that, correct. Okay. Higher education. So the name change was, for some people, kind of upsetting, even though it, it may help, or it helps the Health Science Center, or T TCM immensely. Mm -hmm. I guess a lot of people were upset then for uh, various reasons, and they have Not a lot adjusted. of people, not a lot of people. The people who supported us, the alumni that supported us and gave us money, they were not upset, they understood. Right. The alumni who did not support <laughs> us, because when I get a call, I'd go check. Uh, they didn't, did not support this. Uh, however, that's eased down and, and it's moved forward. Becoming University of North Texas Health Science Center, what that does for us is automatically gives us entree to somewhere around 100,000 alumni. My gosh. And appreciate we have 1,300 alumni that are graduates of TCM. So we have a hundred, now 113, uh, whatever the numbers are, uh, 113,000 uh, uh, alumni, uh, which have the name University of North Texas Health Science Center. Also what that does, it gives us nine legislators who are graduates of the University of North Texas. Ah. Okay? And uh, it opens up the opportunity for cooperative and collaborative programs, which we did not have previously. Any, for example, in programs as far as from degrees from North Texas to here? Is well, the, the graduate degrees uh -huh. from there uh, also I told you about the cooperative geriatric program right. that, that we have with Dr. Knabel. We also have uh, opportunities for other programs, which the dean can mention to you about specifics of collaborative programs with the University of North Texas. So the next alumni person has a lot to work with with that many alumni. I didn't know there were 
as many as you mentioned. Has the mission that TCOM had, and now the Health Science Center has a mission, has it changed or been altered any in, in regards to research, uh, for example, or patient care and education? What, what about no, research? It, the, the medical school's mission will not change. It will continue to be primary care and will continue to be producing physicians for areas of need in Texas. That will never change while okay. I'm president. And I don't think it will change uh, with my successor, <laughs> hopefully, because uh, that's where health care reform is. What it is is an enhancement. The Health Science Center offers the opportunity to an, be an enhancement for our mission and make our mission stronger. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's the best I can answer that one. Well, that's, that, that sounds good to me. I can't complain with that, uh, that answer. Are there some steps that you now have to face now that you're a health science center connected with the university? You have achieved that goal. Are there some other steps that you need to look at taking next in yes. the progression or the logical progression, if you will, of this yes. whole thing? Yes. What we have to do now is to, well, let me preface by nothing breeds success better than success, okay? And, and part of the problems that we're dealing with now are products of success. Uh, now that we're a health science center, uh, groups are coming out of the woodwork. Dr. Richards, Dr. Cohn, Mr. Ferguson, uh, We'd like you to consider putting in X number of program here at the Health Science Center. We've had been visits by three or four different groups. Would you be interested in moving forward with pharmacy, uh, pediatry, uh, allied health? Uh, uh, can you do some things uh, with us? So what we have to do is be very careful to make sure that our strategic planning relates to a natural progression that will not deter from our central mission that I alluded to earlier. That is the next phase. The other phase is that, that because of our, our, our status uh, in this community, we are now having local hospitals come and say, Dr. Richards, would you be interested in, in a further partnership with my hospital? Because appreciate that healthcare reform is, is alliances and networks, right? And there's one common denominator that reflects about that area because we're the largest patient, uh, 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 we're the largest physician-driven driven group in the community. And with our stature, wouldn't it be nice if we were part of this network and this network and that network and we have to make some choices on where, where that is? And, and, and I uh, want those choices to be made very clearly on the basis of what is the best for a community as a whole. And what fits into the, the educational parameters and what, under which we're licensed, if you will. Okay. Uh, we're here in the, in the education business. We're not in the market share business. Right. We're in the patient care business not in the market share business, but we want to be a health science center with a comp all the components to have the same rights and privileges and responsibilities of any other health science center. And that's where our planning is located, and that's a message that I'm carrying to the community right now. We have a health care system in Tarrant County that's in disarray. Set it publicly. Because what we have is a high infant mortality, we have a high uh, teenage pregnancy, we have drugs and violence and all that other craziness with the demise of the family, but yet we can bring something to the table. The reason that there's a problem is we have John Peter Smith running a group of clinics, we have the public health department running a group of clinics, we have the health science center running a group of clinics, <laughs> and the patient gets caught in the middle of the bureaucracy because there's no coordination. So what we have is a medical education consortium. The medical education consortium is John Peter Smith Hospital, Harris Hospital System, 
Southwestern Medical School, the University of North Texas that I brought to the table, and formerly the Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine, now the, the University of North Texas Health Science Center. That's where 38% of the health care sits at this table. The goal was to bring together a community effort in medical education. But reality, with 38% of the health care sitting at the table, some of our strategic planning was, where can we serve better collectively? And we're looking at that initiative. So education and patient care are your, are your main focuses then as in, in the county. It sounds like in what's best for those two things would be the direction now, you'd go. Well, n let me rephrase that. Uh, education is our mission. Uh -huh. What can we do to serve the community? Now, it could be through patient care. It could be through, through public health uh, research on uh, the diseases in Tarrant County, and it could be by putting on programs to give support to those groups who have special needs. So it's a multi-focus uh, serving the community. It's a big picture definitely to get a, to get a grasp of. Yes, it is, but it certainly is a point that's very compatible with what we're doing. The, the federal prison uh, hospital that's going in out there at Carswell uh, is an opportunity for us to serve the community because what happens in the job structure at Carswell with the, with the military base, Air Force base closing and, and the Navy going in there and those number of jobs, this is an economic factor. And we were approached again over a year and a half ago. I was approached by the Assistant Surgeon General of the federal prison system who was a friend of, of, of Dr. Cohn's and myself for 20 years, uh, Dr. Ken Matsugu. He said, would you be interested? He says, we don't have a partnership with a health science center. We think you can offer something for us and we can offer something for you. Would you be interested? I said, if it's in the best interest of the community and it fits our educational base, we're interested. That's on target to move forward. Excellent. Mm -hmm. What other challenges lie ahead for you as well as the Health Science Center in the immediate future or even maybe projecting out a few years? Well, there are major, major challenges. The challenges are what support is there for higher education by the taxpayers of the state of Texas. That's one. Mm -hmm. uh, will they be willing to fund those institutions, preferably who meet the governor's task force on health care reform that are doing the things necessary to meet those that are underserved? That's one. Second of all, where are we uh, with uh, external funding relative to to National Institute of Health type of people. Mm -hmm. Will there be funding there for programs and people like we have, quality people like we have, who can apply for those grants and get funding to offset the downsizing of, of higher education in the state of Texas? What uh, investment will Tarrant County and the state of Texas have in supporting us with foundation grants? and individual grants recognizing the role that we have in a collaborative effort within this community. Those are the major challenges. The Health Science Center gets a lot of grants, I notice, for research. Mm -hmm. It sounds like that will continue and from what I can gather. You're big, you have a lot of focus on that then. We do. It's important for us in the area of credibility to let the people of Texas and the nation know that along with our mission of producing our primary care physicians, that we also serve to bring a set of knowledge in healthcare uh, as a whole, because healthcare information changes at about 10% a year, and we've contributed to that. How do you see your role as president changing? Do you see significant changes coming in the next few years or a nice even keel, so to speak? No. I, my, role, my role has changed dramatically uh, in the last year. I, I'm not doing the same things I did a year ago. A year ago, much of my, my work has been internal within the institution. My work now is outside the institution. It's in the community. It's in Washington. It's in Austin. It's in those areas where 
with the also in consultation with other uh, uh, networks within the osteopathic community to give leadership and serve where I can to bring an external focus to our institution. Oh, so the role has changed already then and, and probably will stay in this, this phase. I know you do a lot of traveling, probably a lot more than, than you uh, used to do. I'm tired of, of hotels and I'm tired of restaurants and I'm tired of air, airplanes. Well, I don't know. I, I think the AOA in Boston was a lot of fun from what, I, what I've gathered from, <laughs> from talking to people. Yeah, well, some had more fun than others. <laughs> Are there any other things, maybe I, and I've probably missed quite a few things here, uh, being a layman, if you will, in this, uh, this area, that you'd like to bring up at this point? No. Uh, uh, I probably caught you off guard with that question. No, you, you didn't. It's, uh, what I'd like to say is, is that all along that we have been most proud of our bricks and mortar. We've been most proud of our facilities and we have outstanding facilities in comparison to anything that you want to compare to. But the real strength of the institution is, is not in the bricks and mortar. The real strength of the institution is in our students, our faculty, our staff, and in our people. And they have to understand that even through difficult times that they're part of something bigger and that something bigger is is uh, is what's in their heart and when they serve on a, on a committee or when they serve in a community uh, initiative in their church or in their community as a whole that they serve not only as themselves by themselves but they also serve as a constituent of the University of North Texas Health Science Center. And every time that that happens, there was someone who says, where do you work? What do you do? And that's an opportunity to tell the story that can bring us into the 21st century as, as not only the best osteopathic medical school, but one of the best health science centers that this country uh, will have. And that's, that's a goal. It seems like to me that the administration of the Health Science Center wants every person, no matter how, what their level of faculty or staff, to feel like when a person graduates that they had a, some part in that person's mm -hmm. time here at, uh, at the Health Science Center. And I think that uh, speaks a lot for you as an administrator. Uh, instead of just being a person that works here, everyone yeah. feels like they took a part. And I think that yeah. says a lot for you. I, I guess that when I have met with and I try to meet with, uh, every year I tried to meet with every department and, and uh, bring a state of the union, if you will, to that department. And, I, and I've been most successful in doing it. Some I have not been able to meet with because of my schedule. But I try to tell them that, that when my tenure here as president is over, uh, what I'd like to be remembered for mostly is that they will, that I'll be remembered by the plea that I've made that when I am successful in carrying the message and we become successful, whereas that person who sweeps the floor out here between five and one o'clock or does a uh, delivery from one point A to point B, if that person feels that every May when that, when we graduate a class, that they feel a sense of pride in their heart, that they were part of making that happen in a small way, and that they helped train those physicians who either served in Desert Storm or is replacing the heart in, in uh, Philadelphia or uh, practicing in Mule Chishu, Texas, then my efforts will not have gone uh, awry. They will, they will have been successful if a percentage of our faculty staff feel that they're part of something bigger than working from 8 to 5 o'clock. And that's what I want to be remembered for. Those are excellent words, Dr. Richards. And are there any other remarks you'd like to make before we tie the ribbons on this, so to speak? No, I just appreciate the opportunity to tell my story. And you've done a great job interviewing. Thanks, sir. I, no, I appreciate your time and, and uh, 
blocking off some time mm -hmm. of your valuable schedule and busy schedule to meet with us mm -hmm. and uh, hope to maybe tie up some more loose ends in the future as we continue. Yeah, this, let's say that this is a beginning. Let's, let's do this again so that uh, you ask some, some good questions and let me have a, a chance to talk from my heart because there's more in there. I, I've got a lot of motion uh, about uh, what I'm doing and I have a lot of, uh, of uh, pride in, in what we've done in the past 23 years and I have a, uh, I'm very optimistic about our future uh, when we can do some things together. So thanks for listening. Thank you and appreciate your time. We'll definitely get to another scheduled interview. Thanks again. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Luke.